recent British review of cosmetic procedures in the UK said that they were a crisis waiting to happen and called for regulation. And now, as they prepare for their AGM this week, the Irish Association of Plastic Surgeons are also calling for full regulation of the sector. I'm joined now by Peter Marr, who is current secretary of the association. Peter, thanks very much indeed for coming in uh, this morning. First off, can I ask you, what is the current scale? I mean, it's a really big growth area in medicine, if you like. What kind of growth has there been in cosmetic medicine here in Ireland? Uh, the growth has been phenomenal. Um, it's a combination, I suppose, of better standards of living across, uh, across society in many respects. But also there are uh, other challenges within the market for uh, various uh, agencies or clinics, private clinics, uh, who are reducing the price for de various different procedures. And that makes it more uh, attainable for, for, for people who are, who are looking for it. So it's been a, mon a monstrous uh, expansion within, within the specialty of aesthetics. I suppose it's kind of normalised now, isn't it, many of these cosmetic procedures? It is normalised, but it, it shouldn't be trivialised at the same time. Uh, uh, undergoing any cosmetic procedure is a significant undertaking and it's not something that needs to be taken lightly and there shouldn't be external influences on it. You should be able to attend a properly trained, registered plastic surgeon who will run through what the potential risks or pitfalls are of the surgery and then have some time to cool off and think about whether it's for you, we call it the cooling off period, whether it's for you and then visit the surgeon again and make sure that you understand exactly what you're getting yourself into. Um, and can we talk through some of the problems that you're seeing? Um, I, I know you've brought in a, a couple of photos. We'll just take a look at yeah. these. These are some of the <coughs> botched um, procedures that you would have seen. Like, wh wh what is this? Uh, th this, yeah, it's, it's this is a lady who had a, a, what's, what's known as an abdominoplasty or a, a tummy tuck procedure. And uh, she was the first problem was that she was only uh, six months after having a baby. So the right, right thing to uh, there was for her to have let everything settle down and see how things uh, pan out and give her a, a time to lose weight and so forth. But instead, she had an abdominoplasty and she ran into a problem afterwards. And, the, you know, any surgical procedure is associated with risks which are accepted and should be fully understood and discussed with patients. And uh, this lady had, had, not, had not had any of the potential pitfalls explained to her. And that's the first issue. The second issue is what happens when, when you run when into it does problems. Go wrong. Yeah, exactly. And frequently, these procedures in the, in the cosmetic clinics around town, as it were, are performed by what we call FIFO surgeons who fly in and fly out. And you turn around, this lady turned around and went back to the clinic to see if she could go health and they were closed it was the weekend so she ended up in the public health care system here being, being looked after and she had uh, at no stage had it been explained to her that there was the potential that her wounds might break down and she might have a problem and what would happen then and, and obviously many of the cosmetic clinics operating in Dublin are fine with fully qualified doctors and all the rest but I mean this issue of, of doctors flying in and out are you seeing that often that yeah, you're free, picking yeah. up the pieces from there's, that? There's an ever-increasing trend, yeah. I mean, there are... Uh, th there's no regulation per se. Anybody can do it. And, uh, you know, if there, there might be many reasons why people would want to do it. And um, Money. Exactly, exactly. And uh, as the costs come down, shortcuts are taken. Uh, there's no backup. There's no, uh, you know, the, the surgeons who are operating on these patients are not on the specialist register. And, you know, in, within the Irish Association of Plastic Surgeons, we're trying to get this message across that your surgeon should not just be on the general register, should be on the specialist register of plastic surgeons. In other words, have a full uh, plastic surgery training and then be admitted to the specialist register. All doctors are on the general register. It doesn't, say, it doesn't mean anything if your surgeon says, well, I'm on the, I'm on the general register. So at the moment, does that mean that any old doctor can do cosmetic procedures? I, I don't mean to d be so disrespectful to doctors, but that you don't need any specialist no, plastic not, surgery training to do it? None whatsoever. None really? whatsoever. Yeah, and you don't have to support your data. You don't have to be able to provide evidence that you have done uh, the set amount of the procedures or what your experience is. There's no, there's no call for that. And with that kind of money going, I suppose it is attracting an awful lot of doctors into the field. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's hugely attractive. And, and a lot of the, the part of the, sh obviously the shortcuts taken, but there's, there's a, a terrible trend towards incentivization in these cosmetic clinics. You go in with yourself and your best friend from our support and you leave and your best friend is having an aesthetic procedure performed as well, as long as they have it done within 48 hours. You know, it's, it's really... There's a lot of advertising as well. Huge amount huge amount of advertising, a lot of money behind these uh, cosmetic clinics and the problem is there have been a number of them recently which have been well celebrated within the uh, popular media here which have closed uh, only to open the following Monday, 48 hours later, different letterhead, same premises, same people working there and nobody can stop this. Okay, uh, Peter, you, you've brought in another, uh, again, I, we would apologise to viewers if they find these images <coughs> distressing but this is another botched procedure you've seen. This was um, a breast augmentation yeah, what this, happened here? Th this was a young girl who had a cosmetic breast augmentation and as, as I stated earlier, any surgical procedure is, is, can be associated with risks or complications and this lady ran into problems post-operatively with infection, infection, peri-implant peri infection. 
And uh, when this happens, it needs to be treated as a priority. It can't be treated in, in a, on an outpatient basis. These patients typically need to be admitted to hospital and to have the implant removed. Treating it with oral antibiotics and being sent home until I come back next week when the clinic is open again, we'll see how you're getting on, which is what happened in this lady's case, uh, is risky, dangerous. So she it's ended up in she a ended public up hospital crit again? Critically unwell in a public hospital and was in, in intensive care as a consequence of an overwhelming in infection. Care, really? The photograph doesn't illustrate it very well. For that, I apologise. But the implant actually extruded through her skin and came out. So she was really critically unwell after it. And, uh, Peter, I mean, just one thing I suppose people would say, well, listen, you would say this. You want to keep the area for yourselves. You want to, like, close it into the small cartel of qualified plastic surgeons and, and get rid of everybody else. Mm. What would you say to that? Well, it's a perfectly normal response. That's so far from what our, 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 the message we're trying to get out is. is that there's plenty of patients who want this kind of surgery. Uh, your Hippocratic Oath says that you need to look after people and care for them. And other influences should not impact on that. You've got to care for the patient for the right reasons, not for the wrong reasons. There's plenty of patients who want uh, to have the surgery performed and uh, that doesn't mean that they become uh, a target and you need to look after them properly. Okay, so we, we've seen the problems, we've seen the issues. What solutions are there out there at the moment? I mean, is the government looking at this or is it to be done at EU level or how close are we to regulating the sector? It, it's very difficult. It's a very, very difficult uh, uh, area. In the UK, they've gone some, some ways towards it. They have the uh, uh, bill that's been entitled the Regulation of Co Cosmetic Procedures, which is on, well on its way through the two houses, uh, through the House Lords in the UK. Uh, we're somewhat behind that. We have had preliminary discussions with, uh, with a number of people who are going to try and help us get this onto the agenda and it's going to involve introducing legislation which in the current climate is difficult because of European law and so forth but there are also agencies in Europe who are trying to do exactly the same to try and ensure that patients who want to have uh, aesthetic or cosmetic procedures performed are cared for in the appropriate manner and perhaps you know they they're channeled through their GPs or if they're not channeled through the GPs in in this country we would ask patients who are considering it to go to the Irish Association of Plastic Surgeons website or the College of Surgeons or their GP uh, whichever is it's, it's very easy to do now and to make sure that you're you're getting somebody or going to see somebody who is fully trained and who not so much will know how to do what you want but will know how to deal with the problems if they occur and that's the crucial issue equally important OK, well, listen, Peter, thank you very much indeed for coming in this morning. Welcome, thank and you. And good luck me. with the AGM this week. Thank you very much. Thanks.